diving into the CD collection and we're going to discuss the CDs owned by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Hmm. Um, so my introduction to Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers came in, I guess, 81. I remember seeing the video. This is back when videos were really kind of just starting to appear. Um, but I saw the video on some regular show. We didn't have MTV for years. Um, but I saw the video for The Waiting, and I really liked that song. And I think I asked my brother, like, you know, who's that or who was it? And he told me, and I went out and bought the cassette for Hard Promises. Here's the CD. And, uh, I, you know, this is when I first started buying music uh, with my own money or what have you, or getting, you know, m into music a lot. And obviously this was all cassettes back then. Um, but I remember having the cassette of this that summer and just listening to it nonstop. And I think I told the story before. Um, I bought this cassette in like 81, 82 or something like that. I remember going to like a party, like a bunch of people. My one friend was having a party and a bunch of us were going to stay there, you know, overnight and everything. And, um, his family had like this little separate house in behind their regular house. And that's where we were all going to like hang out and have this party and everything. And, um, you know, I think we're like in sixth grade or seventh grade or something. And I, and, you know, I think he said like, put the word out, like, Hey, everybody bring some music or whatever. And so I remember bringing a couple of cassettes and one of them was hard promises. And, uh, I remember, you know, I just kind of put them over by the, you know, the boom box or whatever. And I remember somebody like picking it up and being like, like disgusted with like, who brought Tom Petty to the party or whatever. Cause like a lot of these guys were listening to like Rush and Black Sabbath, like, you know, heavier rock stuff. And at the time, as weird as it may sound at the time, like Tom Petty, I wasn't really aware of this at the time. Now I've read stuff, you know, um, that kind of confirms this, but at the time, like Tom Petty was kind of thought of as like a new wave artist, you know? And so these rock dudes, you know, didn't want nothing to do with Tom Petty, which is hysterical now thinking back because I can assure you every one of them dudes has Tom Petty in their, you know, uh, collection or whatever. Years later, everybody was into it. I mean, Tom Petty is considered classic rock now, you know, right? So it was just kind of comical, but bought this record back then on cassette, loved it, got the CD. You know, I don't remember when I picked a lot of these, uh, Tom Petty CDs up, but, um, but you know, I knew I probably got this one pretty early. Um, but it's a really awesome record. I, like I said, I listened to this like nonstop when I got it on cassette, the waitings on here. That's what got me into it. Uh, woman in love, night watchman, King's roads, really good. Um, I know which one of these tunes, cause they did, uh, that kind of, really popular duet with Stevie Nicks and I th she's on one of these I just can't remember which track it is slipping my mind but uh it's hard promises really great record so then we'll backtrack a bit this is their debut Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers um I got this one not too long ago I picked this up maybe like in a used record store within the last few years um this has Breakdown on it and American Girl, which everybody knows. But, uh, you know, another pretty solid debut by the band, you know. Uh, I know they, they had problems early on. Maybe it was right before Hard Promises or maybe it was after Hard Promises. I know they fought, or, you know, Tom Petty and Heartbreakers, I know they fought, like, the record label to keep the price of their uh, music down, like affordable or whatever, which is admirable, but I know it kind of took a little toll on his career for a few years. Um, then we have Damn the Torpedoes. I remember my brother having this on vinyl and listening to it a lot. Um, it's a really good, uh, album. Don't do me like that. It might be the, the waiting I always think of as my favorite Tom Petty song is that's the one that I first heard and got into the band. And I, and it is an awesome song, but don't do me like that. It's just a amazing, uh, you know, classic, just rock, pop rock song, you know, I just love it. Uh, I've never gotten sick of it. Um, but this whole record's really good. Refugee, Here Comes My Girl, Even the Losers, Shadow of a Doubt, Century City, um, What Are You Doing in My Life? Uh, just, yeah, just a, a, a great, great record. Then we have Let Me Up, I've Had Enough. You know, I've skipped a 
couple. I, I don't have like, you know, all, I don't have his full discography. I've been thinking recently about picking up Southern accents. Um, but, uh, just, you know, haven't come across it yet or whatever, but I, I remember when this came out and, uh, I remember liking Jam and Me, which was like the first single and this record, I don't think it did that great for them. Um, but it's not bad. And besides Jam and Me, all mixed up. I remember liking back then. Um, but I haven't listened to it all that much and I'm not super familiar with it to be quite honest, but, um, you know, I'll have to give that one a, another fresh listen. Then, um, Full Moon Fear comes out, a solo record by Tom Petty, although I think a handful of the guys pop up here and there. I mean, Mike Campbell certainly is on here. I don't know if some of the other guys play on here or not. I don't know enough about Tom Petty and their career. I did watch that documentary, and I'm sure they covered this in that documentary, which is really good. Um, but, uh, I don't know what the reasoning was behind suddenly deciding to do a solo record. You know, it's kind of, I don't know, just kind of odd, especially somebody like Tom Petty, who seems to be kind of, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, captaining, captaining the ship that is the band, you know, he's writing the songs, probably deciding a lot of what they do. So it's kind of odd in that kind of scenario why he would want to do a solo record, you know, unless it's just he wanted to work with different musicians, maybe. I don't know. But uh, like I said, I'm sure they covered that in that documentary. I'm sure it's easy to find the information, but always seemed a little odd to me. Like I can kind of get it if it's like, hey, this dude, uh, you know, the guitar player wants to step out from the band and do a little solo record, you know, that kind of, you kind of can understand that. Like if Mike Campbell wanted to go make a solo record, you could kind of be like, all right, you know, he wants to kind of just get a little taste of the you know, uh, what doing, you know, that maybe stuff that he can't do as part of his band, but Tom Petty, it feels like whatever he would want to do, he would be able to do within the confines of the Heartbreakers, but I guess, I guess not, but this was a super popular record. This kind of brought Petty and even the band to like this other level. I, I think, you know, um, there were, I don't know, there's like six singles released from this thing or something like that. Um, and it's a good record, but I never got that into it. Like, there was always something about it. I just, it just didn't, like, I was like, yeah, this is a good song, but it just, like, wasn't stuff that I, like, was dying to, like, go out and buy the record. I think, ultimately, I picked this up through one of the, like, the record clubs, like BMG or Columbia, ultimately, you know? Like, I held off. I didn't really have any interest in picking it up, and then finally, maybe I needed to pick uh, you know, a, a record, and I just was like, ah, you know, whatever, I'll take free Full Moon Fever, but, you know, I know a lot of people love this record, and it is a good record, but I, it's just not one that I, I don't know that I've listened to this all that much, you know, and I mean, certainly most of this stuff was on MTV and the radio constantly, and the final one that I have, I mean, they put out a ton of other ones, but these are the only ones I have, is uh, Into the Great Wide Open, I remember buying this when it came out. Uh, I think the first single was Learning to Fly, which is a really good song. I don't know what it was that made me just want to pick this up, like buy it, like, you know, within a month of it being released. Because, I mean, that's a good song, but it's not something where I'm like, this is, it's not like The Waiting or Don't Do Me Like That, where I'm like, this is one of their best songs ever. So I don't know what it was that made me want to pick this up, but I did. And the one thing I remember when I got this, I was in college at the time. I remember uh, bringing it in to play on the college radio to play some songs. And I just remember this at that point in time was like the best sounding record I can remember ever hearing. Like, I'm not a big like audiophile. I'm not like that picky about like, oh, you know, the mix of this isn't right or what are the, you know, the bass is buried or any of that stuff. I'm not really like that. I just like listening to good songs. But this stood out to me for the first time ever that I've listened to music in my life. And maybe since it was the first record I ever really remember listening to and going like, like, wow, this really, really sounds good, you know? And I mean, I think there's probably some people that would argue that this is overproduced or something, or maybe it's, you know, just a little too you know, slick or something. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure Jeff Lynn, who co-produced this, I mean, I think 
probably a lot. That's probably the argument against him, maybe. But I just really like this record, and just remembering how good it sounded was just like really stood out to me. And uh, but that, but the album's just awesome. I mean, King's Highway is great. Into a Great White Oak, but I think they released as a single too. That was pretty good. Two Gunslingers is really good. The Dark of the Sun, All or Nothing, All the Wrong Reasons is awesome. Um, Out in the Cold, You and I Will Meet Again, Built to Last, that ends the album is really good. Making some of the, just a really good, good record. Maybe, maybe my favorite uh, of the Tom Petty and Heartbreakers albums, to be quite honest. But yeah, that's it. And I don't know why I've never picked up other records by them. Like they're a band I like, but I was never like you know, really into them, you know, so maybe that's part of the reason, but they have a ton of other CDs that, uh, that, you know, obviously out there, and I'm, sh I would love to hear from anybody out there who's a huge Tom Petty fan, just kind of like maybe suggesting some of the other ones that I don't have that I really should maybe pick up, but, uh, you know, that'd be cool, but let me know what you think of these records, songs that you liked on them, how you were introduced to the band, the first thing that you heard by them, that'd be cool. But uh, thanks for watching, and see you another time.